Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson of learning Japanese. Today we are continuing directly from our previous video, which was our introduction to the grammar pattern that is Hazudes. And so in this video, we will be going off of the information that we established in that previous one and going a bit deeper. And so our more specific topic for this video is going to be the past tense form of the grammar pattern that is Hazudes, or rather the two different approaches to using the past tense with this grammar pattern and how they differ. So again, you definitely should have watched the previous video before watching this one, but just a little recap anyways, the grammar pattern Hazudes is going to mean something along the lines of supposed to be blank or should be blank or ought to be blank or reason to believe blank and it's used when the speaker wants to express that, well, they expect something to be a certain way or they expect something to occur a certain way or turn out a certain way. In our previous video, we actually did cover example sentences that use this grammar pattern in the past tense form, but that was uh, with nouns and adjectives. So in this one, we'll have a kind of priority of example sentences using verbs. Okay, so let's begin. With this grammar pattern, Hazudes, we can turn it into the past tense form two ways. We can either conjugate the word itself that we're using with the grammar pattern, uh, the verb, the adjective, or the noun that we're using, and then placing the phrasing hazudes right after. Or we can conjugate the actual wording hazudes itself into the past tense form, so that would be hazudatta basically, if you're using the plain form. These two approaches have the same general meaning, but they do have different implications. Our first approach, where we just conjugate the word that we're using with the grammar pattern, is probably the simpler one. It doesn't really affect the meaning of the grammar pattern hazudes at all. It'll still just mean should be or supposed to be, but the thing that is should be or supposed to be will just be something in the past tense. However, when we use a present tense word, uh, such as the dictionary form of verb plus hazudata, so the hazudes is now being conjugated into the past tense form in this version, this approach is now going to add on the implication that the speaker's expectation didn't come true. And alongside that is going to be basically a sense of regret or dissatisfaction uh, with the speaker. However, that doesn't mean that the first approach where we just conjugate the word that we use with this grammar pattern, when we do that, that doesn't mean that the expectations always come true. In those cases, it could be that the expectation did not come true either, and the speaker feels the regret or dissatisfaction there too. There are actually phrases that are commonly used with that approach um, to do just that. Uh, no ni or nan desu ga or nan dakedo. These are all kind of phrasings that mean uh, but dot dot dot. And when we're using this grammar pattern hazu des, you'll commonly see those um, being used right after this grammar pattern to mean I s expected something to be this way but dot dot dot. And that little but dot 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 phrasing right there will imply that the thing that you expected actually didn't come true to your expectations and so there's kind of a feeling of regret or dissatisfaction. And of course there actually is another way to tell if um, the expectation that is expressed in this grammar pattern, whether it came true or not, there's a way to tell if the subject or the performer of the action used with the grammar pattern is the speaker or not because it can't be used with the speaker unless it didn't come true. And that is something that we established in the previous video, the introduction to Hazu. So uh, yeah, check that out if you need a refresher. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna provide basically an example of each of those cases that I just outlined. The first one being where we conjugate the word used with the grammar pattern to the past tense, but leave Hazu this as the present tense, where we conjugate the word into its past tense and leave Hazu as the present tense Hazu des but then also add on a phrasing such as no ni or nan desu ya. Uh, then thirdly, when we leave the word used with the grammar pattern in its present tense, but conjugate hazu des into a past form such as hazu datta. Okay, so our first example sentence will be uh, the simplest one. We have the line, kesa o motte kita hazu na no ni. This is gonna translate to something along the lines of, I should have brought my umbrella with me, but, or I thought that I brought my umbrella with me, but, so let's break down this sentence bit by bit. First of all, we have kesa, which is gonna to translate to umbrella. It is gonna be the direct object to our verb action that the speaker is uh, performing, which is then gonna need it to be marked by the direct object particle o. We have the verb motsu, which means basically to carry with or to have. It's gonna be in its te form because it's being used in the grammar pattern that is the te form of a verb plus a kind of going verb. And our going verb is kuru, which means to come, which will then translate to to come having brought my umbrella or to come having had my umbrella in my possession or something along those lines. Kudu is gonna be conjugated to the past plain form, kita, because uh, we wanna express that this happened in the past. And kudu is also gonna be the verb that we wanna use with this grammar pattern, so uh, it's conjugated into kita, past plain form. Uh, that's perfectly acceptable for this grammar pattern, so now we can just plug in the phrasing 
Hazidas, which we will do. So then that will translate to basically should be that I came here uh, having brought my umbrella. But the sentence isn't over quite yet. We add on that little extra flavor of nanoni. This is the grammar pattern that basically means even though. And so then this whole sentence will translate to something like even though I should have brought my umbrella with me, dot dot dot. And that even though dot 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 is kind of just like, even though I should have, I didn't. Or it turns out that I didn't. That's the implication there. And so yeah, the key thing to note here is of course that that little inclusion of nanoni at the end is going to very, um, very assuringly confirm that the expectation did not come true. Your expectation that you did bring the umbrella wasn't true and now there is that resulting feeling of dissatisfaction or regret. Darn it, I thought I did, but I didn't. In hindsight though, the context of this example sentence uh, might not have needed the not only at the end at all to imply that it didn't come true because you wouldn't really say something like, I was supposed to have brought my umbrella unless you meant already that you didn't. Okay, so next up we're gonna go with an example sentence where we use the past form of a verb that is used in this grammar pattern, we keep the hazides in the present tense and this is going to mean you expected something to be this way and it doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't. And so we have the very simple line of kanojo wa saki ni ita hazida. This is going to translate to she must have gone ahead. Break down the sentence bit by bit. First up we have kanojo which means she or her. Mark her as the topic with the particle wa. We have the phrasing saki ni which just means basically ahead or before. Then we have the verb iku which means to go in its past plain form ita and that's gonna be the verb that we use in this grammar pattern. So now what we do is we basically just plug in the phrasing hazuda to mean it should be that she went ahead. Kanojo wa saki ni ita hazuda. And so yeah, the thing to know here is that the verb used with the grammar pattern is in its past form. And because there's no inclusion of some phrasing like no ni or nan desuga to mean even though or but dot dot dot, that in turn means that there's still a very good chance that this is true. The expectation that I had is going to turn out to be true. Okay, so now we're gonna go into our third example in which we conjugate the actual wording hazudes into the past form. And this will basically affirm that our expectation did not come true. What was supposed to be, what should have been, did not turn out as such. And so our line is watashi tachi wa tanoshi toki o sugosu da hazudatta. This is gonna translate to we were supposed to have a good time, and then kind of like in parentheses here, but we didn't, dot dot dot, parentheses end. Let's break down the word bit by bit. First up we have watashi, which means I, but it's gonna be marked by the plural tachi, so watashi tachi is going to basically mean we. We're gonna mark we as the topic of the sentence with the particle wa. Uh, then we have tanoshi toki, which is gonna mean basically fun time or good time. The direct object marker o to turn that uh, fun times into the direct object of the verb action that's about to come, which is sugosu, which means basically to pass time. And so this is kind of like literally worded to pass a fun time or to spend a fun time. More naturally it'll just be to have a good time or to have a fun time. Sugosu is a plain form verb and it's gonna be the verb that we're gonna use our grammar pattern and it's gonna stay in its dictionary form because the dictionary form can be indicative of a present tense. And so we wanna keep the word that we use with the grammar pattern in its present tense because what we're gonna do is we're gonna conjugate hazudes into the past tense to um, express the past tense basically. And so we do just that, instead of adding hazuda right after that, we add hazudatta. And so then our translation will be basically it was supposed to be that we have a good time. So yeah, note here in the translation, we're reflecting that it's the hazu that turns into the past tense. So the supposed to be is the thing that's gonna be changed into the past tense in English. Um, was supposed to be, uh, then we can kind of just leave the verb action, spend a good time or have a good time in its present tense. It was supposed to be that we have a good time. And so yeah, another important thing to note is that it's the data in the hazu data that affirms that the expectation was not met and it grammatically and quite literally makes the expectation a thing of the past and kind of replaces it with the regret or dissatisfaction that the speaker is now feeling. Okay, so now next up, we're gonna do an array of example sentences of basically the same example sentence because we need to cover different forms of the past tense in that we're gonna do once again, uh, conjugating the verb itself into the past tense and leaving hazu in the present tense. Number two will be that same thing as number one, but of course adding something like no ni at the end of the sentence or nan desuga. Number three will be leaving the word itself in the present tense and changing hazu into the past tense. So those are basically the three conditions that we covered just so far, but now we're gonna add in two more. We'll have the word and hazu des being left in its present form. So both of them will be present form. Uh, then lastly, we'll have the word used with the grammar pattern and hazu in the past tense. So both of them will be past tense. And so we'll line up these five 
five cases with the same general example sentence and see how they differ in meaning. So first up, present tense for both of them. Kanojo wa ichiji made ni denwa suru hazu da. Let's break down this sentence bit by bit. Kanojo, she, her, of course. Particle wa marking her as the topic, of course. Ichiji is going to translate to one o'clock. Made ni is going to be the particles that mean by, so by one o'clock. Denwa suru, verbal noun that means to phone, to call. It is a verb, so we're going to use it with this grammar pattern. Then we just plug in hazida. So everything here is basically in the present tense and this is going to translate to she's supposed to call by one o'clock or I expect she'll call by one o'clock. So you'll see here in that translation, everything is also in the present tense. So this is something that we're expecting to play out as we expect. And yeah, not enough time has passed yet for us to know if whether or not it came true or not. So we don't have any feelings of regret or dissatisfaction just yet or maybe we won't at all because we don't know, we don't know. In our next version, we conjugate the verb into its past tense. So uh, the sentence doesn't really change at all. Instead of denwa suru, we have denwa shita. And so I'm not gonna really break down the sentence again bit by bit because that would just be doing the same thing over and over. And so what this version will translate to is something like, I expect she called at one o'clock. So enough time has passed in this scenario for the thing that we expected to play out to play out. The speaker just doesn't know the result yet. And because they don't know the result yet, they're still expecting basically in the present tense. And so I expect is indicative of that. The speaker still has expectations that it will be this way. But the actual action of whether or not she called by one o'clock already happened and that is reflected in the translation as well because called is in the past tense. So again, the thing to note in that one, because uh, the verb or the word used with the grammar pattern was the thing that we chose to conjugate into the past tense It could still turn out to be that our expectation is true in our next version It's gonna be the opposite because we're gonna conjugate hazu des into the past tense now And so hazu data and so again the sentence is exactly the same except for den wa suru hazu data This is going to express the past tense as well And this will be that we do know the results now the speaker does know the results She was supposed to call by one o'clock or I expected her to have called by one o'clock parentheses, but she didn't. And so yeah, now that the word expected is in its past tense now, it's kind of like we turn the speaker's action of expecting into the past tense because it's a thing of the past now. It's over with. They don't expect anything now because they know that it didn't come true. She was supposed to call by one o'clock or I expected her to call by one o'clock. Now in our fourth version, the word used with the grammar pattern is going to be conjugated to the past tense. So it will be denwa shita, but we're gonna leave hazidas in the present tense, but also we're gonna add the phrasing nanoni at the end. So that'll be kanojo wa ichiji made ni denwa shita hazu nanoni. This is gonna to translate to it is supposed to be that she had called by one o'clock, or it should be that she had called by one o'clock, but she didn't. And so it's the nanoni at the end of the sentence that will add that but she didn't and confirm that the speaker's expectation did not play out as he or she well expected it to. If the not only at the end wasn't there, then it could still very well be that uh, it's possible that the expectation would come to be true uh, because that's exactly the version that we covered previously. And so yeah, I explained that already. Now for our last version, we're gonna conjugate the word used with the grammar pattern into the past tense. Uh, then we're gonna conjugate hazudes into the past tense as well. This isn't a very common thing to do at this grammar pattern, but uh, it is possible. So that will be kanojo wa ichiji made ni denwa shita hazudatta. This will translate to she was supposed to have called by one o'clock uh, parentheses, but she didn't dot 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 parentheses. And so you'll note here that in this translation, uh, the double past tense is reflected because we had supposed to past tense and have called past tense. And another thing to note is that this is pretty much the same meaning as the previous version where we just use nanoni, but this expresses a, a stronger feeling of regret or dissatisfaction because of the data in hazu data. Okay, so uh, hopefully those two kind of elongated set of examples were good examples of how to use this grammar pattern in the past tense, the two different approaches that you can take, conjugating either the word used with the grammar pattern or the actual wording of the grammar pattern, hazides, uh, itself. In our next lesson, we will be moving on from past tense to negative form in which there will also be two approaches and an approach to combine both approaches. And yeah, it's complicated, but we will learn it. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed your time doing so. If you'd like to express that, you can like the video, leave a comment below or subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to support more of these video lessons or support more of these video lessons uh, being created more often or uh, support more types of videos, please do consider checking out our Patreon page and consider becoming a patron there. Also include on the screen right now, 
now are, of course, a bunch of links on where to find and follow us uh, elsewhere online, including our official website. And lastly, check out our Discord server. We've got a community of hundreds of people learning Japanese um, just there. So if you're looking for somebody to voice chat with just to practice speaking Japanese or you have a quick question that needs a quick answer or if you just want to talk about uh, anime or music or manga or other Japanese things, learn Japanese.becausedreams.com slash discord. And with that, see you next time.